we have uh, Goga Patarkatsishvili from Georgia here. He is a backend software engineer. He is also a Python lecturer at the Georgian Business and Technology University. He is also doing his PhD in computer science. And he would like to tell you something about uh, how to connect objects with each other uh, in, in Python, like in some python ways. So give him a warm welcome. <clears throat> OK, thank you for coming. Hello. Uh, before I introduce myself, just to warm up, I want to mention that it's my second time on PyCon conference. But I'm first time in the Bratislava, and the city looks very interesting for me with his nature, with his attractions, with his historical buildings. So before journey, I uh, read a lot of articles uh, about the city. Uh, I have watched video guides for tourists, and I saved interesting places in the Google Maps. Uh, I will show you how my Google Maps looks like now. Uh, and of course, I have used the same strategy with the conference. At first, I checked the list of speakers. After this, uh, I checked their chosen topics. And uh, finally, I marked the favorite ones or interesting ones for me for today. I will show you the result. But uh, here is one problem. My time is quite limited. So uh, I must make choice uh, attend on interesting talks or see the interesting places in the city. So I will show you what I usually do when I uh, have to make decision. I have a very easy Pythonic solution for this. It's, uh, there is need only three lines of code, and this is how it looks like. Uh, but uh, if, if you don't want to make decision too quickly, you can just add two more lines. OK. <laughs> OK, OK. This method works very well. I will show you in the end if you will have time. OK. Uh, but uh, <coughs> Now a little bit about me. Uh, I'm Goga Patakatsuli. Uh, I am from Georgia. Uh, I had been uh, working in SilkNet about four years. It is one of the biggest telecommunication company in Georgia. It provides uh, various telecom services, and it uses a variety of uh, technologies. Uh, I had been software engineer there. Mainly I worked with Oracle databases. Of course, I used it also Python. Uh, but a uh, few months ago, I changed my working place. Currently, I'm working in the Neso Lab, it is a young team of software development uh, professionals, and uh, we are providing different services, mobile applications, web applications, enterprise solutions, etc. So during the last years, I had been working with different uh, technologies, uh, with different languages, databases, and uh, for now, I'm more interested in these ones. OK, now about how connect objects with Python ways when to use aggregation, association, inheritance, and etc. Uh, I think it's not hard to see and uh, remember difference between those kind of relations, but uh, uh, every time when I ask someone uh, about those topics, uh, almost everyone says that they have a shadow knowledge about these topics. Uh, for example, difference from aggregation and association. Uh, but uh, if someone does have knowledge, they, have a, they know only on the concepts. But it's true that object-oriented programming is not language-specific, but there is uh, uh, variations from language to language uh, in the implementation of the tiles. And there are also techniques which are not uh, appropriate for all languages. Uh, for example, uh, when we are talking about multiple inheritance, we should consider that uh, it's a very sensitive topic. Uh, there exists uh, something like diamond problem, which is a very big problem for a lot of languages. And there are languages which does not uh, provide multiple inheritance. There are also languages which does not provide multiple inheritance for classes, only for interfaces. And uh, there are also languages uh, where multiple inheritance uh, is not allowed. Uh, uh, there are also languages uh, which uh, using only single inheritance. And uh, it's very common to they use interfaces, protocols, mixings, traits, and uh, uh, other architectural solutions to provide us uh, uh, functionality of true multiple inheritance. Uh, there is also dependency injection, which is also very important, uh, but very painful things. Because uh, in this case, if programmers have all knowledge of object-oriented programming, if they don't ask questions anymore, like why we need objects, we can write everything uh, using functions. And this would be very ironic in Python's point of view. 
they still does not consider that they must write Python with Python equations. Uh, they still does not consider how can you use super classes to uh, make dependency injection. Uh, I don't want to talk about these topics because there already exists uh, very good talk about this one, uh, super consider super. So if you have not seen it, you should definitely watch it. But before we starting topics, how to connect objects with each other, uh, we must have deeply understanding uh, how uh, method resolution order works with old and with new type classes in Python. Okay, so uh, as we know, Python supports multiple inheritance. Uh, what means that uh, in Python we can create a class which can inherit uh, uh, features and attributes from multiple classes. And there exists also method resolution order, also known as MRO. Uh, what is MRO? MRO is just a uh, hierarchy in which base classes are called when we are uh, searching uh, method in the parent classes. Mm, so uh, there are two type classes in Python, all type classes, uh, or classic style classes, which were uh, the only one option in the Python 2.1 and before. After this, uh, from Python 2.2 to Python 3, there were also new type classes. So if you wanted to create a new type classes, uh, we had to inherit from base class or another new type, new type class. But in new Python, there exists only new type classes. So we can inherit objects, or we can also does not inherit from in object class. Uh, even if we try to write all type class, uh, it's implicitly derived from objects. Okay, there, is, there are a lot of changes in the new type classes. There are the descriptors, slots, static and classic methods, low-level constructors. But one of the most important is that in new type classes, we have new method resolution order. Uh, uh, old classes algorithm for method resolution order was very easy. It worked with this way, deep first from left to right. So it means that if we implement multiple inheritance, uh, Python builds a list of classes to search as it needs to uh, resolve uh, uh, which method has to be called when one is invoked um, by the instance. Uh, this algorithm first looks into the instance class for the invoked method uh, if uh, it does not exist in the instance class. After this, he tries to find it in the parent class uh, if it is not presented in the parent class, he tries to look into the parent of the parent, and this continues uh, until the end of depth of class, and finally, till the end of the inherited classes. So according to this algorithm, in all type classes, method resolution order uh, for these examples will be D, B, A, C. But in the new type classes, we are using C3 linearization algorithm uh, for providing a method resolution order. Uh, uh, it is definition from Wikipedia, you can read it. So if we use the same example, if we have same structure of class, uh, in new type classes, the method, res method resolution order will be DBCA. Okay, so now I think we are ready for to start talking about mixings. Uh, before we started talking uh, uh, about multiple inheritance, we have said that there are languages uh, in, uh, in object-oriented programming, which uh, uh, uses mixings to provide functionality of true multiple inheritance. Uh, but uh, Python does not really provide uh, uh, mixings. There is, uh, sorry, uh, Python does not provide concept of mixings, uh, but there is, it's provided using multiple inheritance. Although technical realization of mixings and multiple inheritance are, uh, alike and we can use similarity, but there is very important differences between them. So in the screen we see how mixing are realized in the Ruby programming language. Uh, uh, Ruby uses modules uh, to create mixings. There are also traits uh, uh, and we can see how PHP uses traits classes to inherit specific method implementations. Uh, there are little difference between mixings and trains and between the real them realization, but uh, uh, for us, no, only interesting is structure of mixings. Okay, so we already said that the Python does not uh, have the concept of mixings, uh, but uh, we still uh, make something like mixings. 
So usually mixings are optional customization for extending certain classes. They differ from abstract classes uh, because abstract class provides only interface without usable functionality, but uh, in the mixings we have functionality, but uh, we don't uh, uh, inherit directly from it. We don't use directly, we don't instantiate from mixings directly. And it's quite logical because if you know the origin of this word, uh, uh, it was used first time by the uh, ice cream shop owner who mixed the basic flour of ice cream with the ex extra ingredients like uh, nuts and cookies and etc. So uh, when we realize the mixing with multiple inheritance, typically it's used as a secondary base class, uh, but because we have in Python method resolution order, it's not mandatory to use it uh, as a secondary base class. Okay, now we can see the example of mixings. How can you use exam, uh, mixing uh, with dictionary, for example? Uh, at first, we are creating uh, our mixing class and trying to override set item function, uh, which basically it's used when we call, uh, when we have dictionary and when we try to set new key value pairs in the dictionary. So uh, here we are just painting some text and after this we are calling our super class. Next, we are creating our dictionary class, uh, which will be subclass of our mixing class and also subclass of our dictionary class. And next, uh, when we create instance from dictionary class and when we set key value pairs in our dictionary, uh, method, resolution, method resolution order makes that our mixing set item is called, which uh, prints the text and also uh, it calls uh, super class, which is a uh, dictionary in our example. So when we, s we can see that uh, MRO plays a major role using mixing as Python because as we already said, uh, Python has no specific implementations for mixings in the language itself. Uh, the best example of using mixing properly we can see in SQL Alchemy, which is one of the uh, popular uh, object relation mapper and uh, SQL toolkit for Python. For example, when we want to create models which will be connected uh, with tables and with, uh, which have similar names and uh, when we want to add the uh, ID column as primary key, uh, we can write our mixing. Mm, and after this, we create my model which will be subclass of base class and also subclass of our mixings and we get class like following. Uh, so if you know that uh, base class does not define any of variables that my mixing defines. For example, if we know that he does not define, uh, for example, table name. Uh, uh, if you know that table name does not exist in both class, we can use the first one and also second one. But if there is defined also in base class some attributes which are in my mixings, uh, there will be a different result because uh, method resolution order works absolutely differently with these cases. Okay, it's also very common to use mixing in rela relationships when we want to create a relationship between tables, for example, when we have class foo and class bar and when we, might, when we want to make reference between them and between class target. Uh, we can just write our mixing for reference and uh, you know, we can add mixing as a parent class for our foo and bar classes. And final result will be like this. You can realize this code. Uh, there are some more advanced uh, situations where SQL Alchemy uses mixings. Uh, you can see the examples in the documentation. Uh, so uh, what about associations? So it's very flexible when a language uh, supports multiple inheritance, but it's not very good and it's not perfect to use each time inheritance when we want to make uh, association between objects when we want to connect objects with each other. Uh, because uh, there is an uh, issue which is called gorilla with banana. Uh, it uh, means when you wanted banana and what you get was a gorilla holding the banana and the entry junk. Uh, it's a very common problem when we're using uh, inheritance and also when we're using multiple inheritance. Uh, there are also like uh, rule of thumb. It means if you think you need multiple inheritance, you're probably wrong, but if you know you need multiple inheritance, you're probably right. Uh, this is from book Python Masters, The Art of Design Patterns. So this, uh, it is where we need uh, associations. Uh, it establishes a relationship uh, uh, among classes uh, to their objects. So because 
<laughs> if we use uh, multiple inheritance uh, and don't define something properly, it may cause a lot of problems in the future. Uh, okay, here is also a definition uh, what association means from Wikipedia. So uh, how can we do associations in Python? Mm. Uh, when we use inheritance, usually there exists easy relationship uh, between objects. For example, uh, if we have class uh, conference and we want to make subclass from it, PyCon conference, there will be easy relationship between those classes and also in reality there will be uh, there is PyCon conference, easy conference, so we have easy relationship in the conferences. But uh, in the associations, uh, we have uh, has a and uses a relations. Name of the first one is composition, and we can see logically that it's much more stronger than uses a relationship. Uh, we can also say that composition is the art, uh, is the act of collecting uh, objects together. Uh, to create new object, and it's very good when we have object which is part of another object. Uh, the second form of association is aggregation, uh, which represent has a relationship, and uh, uh, also in aggregation, both the uh, entities can survive individually. So uh, we will write. Uh, we will see how we can realize uh, this. We will just write right now. Okay. First time uh, we want to write uh, how composition is realized in Python. It will be a good example if we use uh, for association uh, example like uh, speaker and slideshow because between them is exactly is a relationship and because if it doesn't exist a uh, speaker does there will be not slideshow so we can start writing is it visible in the end of the room Yeah, can you make it a bit bigger? Uh, it's already in the presentation mode, but I will, uh, I will change. I will try to change something. Okay. Your phone. Yes, I'm trying, but. Uh, Okay, now we can create a speaker class.
Okay, and now we instantiate speaker, for example. Okay, now we can s we created the uh, easiest example of composition in Python because uh, we are using uh, uh, easier relationship between those classes and uh, if we destroy speaker, there will be no slideshow anymore. Uh, and what about aggregation? Uh, we can change a little bit uh, this example. Uh, we can use uh, for aggregation uh, speaker and microphone because uh, they are different objects. Uh, existence of microphone does not depend on the existence of speaker. So we can change uh, this code. Uh, class, oh sorry. And uh, uh, in the case of aggregation, we are not uh, making instantiate of microphone inside the speaker class. Uh, we, are we are creating it outside of these classes and we are giving instantiate as an argument for our speaker class. Battery level. Battery. Okay, now we are creating microphone here. Where will be battery level is present. Okay, and now we can run our code. Oh, zero error, missing one, the word position now going. Uh, What? Mm. Ah, ah, yes, yes, yes. I forgot it. Thank you. Okay, and, and we are giving, as we already said, the microphone as a parameter for our class, and we get the result from it. 
Okay, now, now we, can we can continue using uh, slideshow again. Okay, uh, so we say that second form of association is aggregation, and uh, in aggregation, both entities can survive individually. As we said, uh, both microphone and uh, speaker can mm, exist individually. So if you destroy uh, speakers, there will be still exist microphone, for example. Uh, there are also typical examples of aggregation. This is uh, organization and person, or another example is uh, student and uh, student and school because if school will be closed, uh, there will be uh, student can find another school. And so the conclusion about uh, associations, we can say that the both composition and aggregation are the form of associations between two objects, but there is several difference between composition and aggregation. Uh, we refer association between two objects as composition. When one class owns the other class, uh, uh, and other class cannot meaningfully exist when the owner is destroyed, but uh, if A and B are associated with each other and uh, B can still uh, exist uh, when it will be not associated with A, uh, this is a, uh, uh, association is known as uh, aggregation. Okay, and uh, one more example, when we talk about associations, uh, it's usage and strong relations between the objects. Uh, we must urgently admit that one of the most frequently used design pattern, composite design pattern. Uh, composite design pattern gives us possibility to build tree-like structures uh, from simple components. The components are uh, composite and leaf objects. So if they have child components, uh, uh, they behave like container, uh, or if they don't uh, have, they behave like variables. Uh, so the key is that both composite and the leaf nodes can uh, uh, have the same interface. Uh, I think the UML diagram is very simple. Uh, the, structure of the structure of the folders is the best example of uh, composite pattern usage, uh, where we create files uh, in, into the folders and we can also create folders into the folders. Uh, now we can see the little example for better understanding of composite design patterns and see the realization uh, of the code. Uh, as first, uh, we are declaring abstract class and we are creating abstract methods uh, in it. After this, uh, each composite object and also each leaf object must implement behavior of abstract class. And it's mandatory because if we talk about folders and files again, uh, we can do the same operation. We can copy, paste, uh, rename both files and folders. Uh, so in the initialization method of composite partners, uh, we are making set collection for child objects, and uh, next also adding operation methods in which we are calling uh, uh, operation method for each child, and we are also adding a, a function uh, with name add, uh, where we can add new child into our set. Uh, and know about uh, leaf class. Uh, leaf class uh, is representation of leaf objects. Uh, uh, it's object which does not have children. So in the leaf class, uh, we define operation method uh, because uh, as we have already said, uh, it's also inherits the comp component objects which uh, was abstract class. Uh, so finally we can create new leaf objects after this, we are creating composite objects. Uh, we are also adding leaf objects uh, to composite objects. And next, uh, we are call operation method uh, on composite objects. And we will see that operation method will be executed uh, three times because uh, there was three leaf objects totally in the containers. So it's all, thank you. Uh, I finished talking about objects and relationships between them. Uh, and uh, now I can run the code which I promised uh, uh, about, which was about decisions. So I will change some things. So we can uh, thank Goga now and uh... <laughs>
if you uh, have any questions on him, you can talk uh, with him afterwards uh, at the lobby. If there, if there are questions. Or, uh, yeah, there are some questions, like mostly like uh, whether you consider Python mixins as an anti pattern. Uh, which one are you reading? Like whether the. Are pi Python mixins an anti pattern? I don't think that uh, mixing in Python is anti pattern because, as we already said, uh, in frameworks and in the most popular toolkits are very often used mixings. Also, in the framework Django, there are used very often uh, mixings. We have seen uh, how it's used in the um, SQL Alchemy, so I don't think that it's uh, anti patterns. It's one of the best usage of multiple inheritance, I think. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah. There was no more questions? Yeah, but we uh, have run out of time, so uh, you can discuss that with the person who asked the question later. Thank you. Okay, okay.